Hello, Jen. Hello, everybody. Thank you for this warm welcome. I'm a little bit nervous, so don't take this in account. Uh, we had great speakers so far, and uh, now uh, I need to go through this exercise and teach you and show you how we can train our bot. Um, so basically, let's see what we have right now, right? So if we open our chat and we just talk to it, uh, as Daniel stated, we have basically a copy of ChatGPT, right? So if I say one plus one, it answers with two. That's not what we want. We really want to train our bot in order to answer what we want him to answer. So first of all, um, how can we do this? Um, the most important part here is that we need to fill up the messages that we sent um, to the Open API um, in order to tell um, ChatGPT what we want to be answered, right? So um, here we have three different things that, or, or three different roles that we need to take in account. Uh, we have the role for the system, we have the role for the user, and for the assistant. So um, let's go just straight and let's for now remove this body messages that we have over there. And let's start filling up the array that we have of messages. Um, the first and, the, and um, it should be the most important part uh, is the role of the system. So let's say that we have uh, a role of system. And uh, the content that we want to pass in, I'm just going to copy paste because it's a very long text. Uh, you probably have all this in, um, in the solutions. So you can also copy paste if you want. Um, but as you can see, what we are basically saying we are telling the system that from now on he's a helpful customer support agent for the social media post generator application this software takes an article url and makes an announcement do not answer any questions not related to the social media post generator application okay this is basically we are now telling the system what he is aiming to do and what he should um, answer with and what he should not. There's a little problem. And if you go to the documentation for OpenAI, uh, Daniel said that this is the best way to learn about it. So if you go to the documentation, um, if you go to the guides of the chat compl um, uh, completion, in the introduction, it says very clear, GPT 3.5 Turbo does not always pay strong att attention to system messages. Future models will be trained to pay stronger attentions to system messages. So that means that for now, it's not uh, heavy enough to, um, to do the instructions that we are sending with a, a system role. But this is not a problem. So uh, for sure, GPT-4 will already change this. Uh, and we can walk around. So because if we go now directly to our uh, social media post generator, and we just try it again. Let me just reload the page and try it again. And we just type one plus one. Sorry. Okay. Right now it is answering that it can only um, assist me with social media post generator uh, application stuff. But that does not mean that it always will. So mm, in order to get rid or, or to surround this problem that we have, there's a very easy way to do it. It's basically what we would do is we will just duplicate this simple uh, object. Let me just copy paste it. You should not copy paste. This is never good. Um, and change the role to user. So basically what we're instructing is as, as a, a system role and a user role, uh, we're passing both the same because the user has way uh, way more weight in GPT 3.5 Turbo. So um, just to be sure that it will never fail in that sense, okay? So, but basically you can see that we already 
getting an answer from uh, OpenAI telling us, or from mm, uh, ChatGPT telling us that he is not able to answer any any mm, question that is not related to our social media post generator, what is already awesome, right? So now what we want and what we need is to instruct our um, our bot to answer what we want. So let, let me just mm, ask a question. Um, let me say, okay, um, I don't know. What can we ask? For example, what is your email? Let's 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 start what what is your email? Okay, and he doesn't know what to answer or how to answer. Okay, we can very easy do this. Um, the best way to do it is basically um, we do a combination of user and assistant role. So let me just uh, first order or this a little bit. Very picky with this, sorry, guys. So let's create just another object. Let's say we have a role of user. And basically what we need to do is give him a question and an answer. As easy as that. So the user would just ask the content, uh, let's say, what is your email address? And what, what we want the assistant or the bot to answer. So let's just below it, just underneath say, uh, assistant. This is the, the third role. System role is only implemented once, and then basically what we uh, should do is always a user assistant role. So uh, one after the other, because this is the question that the user might ask, and this is what we want him to answer. Let's say the content. What do we want uh, the assistant to, to answer is, yeah, let's say support at test.com. Uh, support, sorry. Okay, let's save it. Let me just hard refresh just in case because we are working on a server um, file. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. We're actually on the uh, on the server side on the API, ai.post.ts. So this is the file that we're uh, handling. Um, let me just close this away and let's ask again. So what is your email? And now it should answer us with the correct email, but it's not doing it. That's great. Why? Um, yeah, I know why. I, I introduced myself a bug uh, because I removed uh, actually the messages that were coming from the front end. Sorry for that, guys. Um, so basically what we need is uh, to append that um, body messages that I removed at the beginning. At the end, let's just do it here. Uh, body dot messages. So basically, we were not giving him a prompt, and that's why he was not able to know what to respond with. And now it should, it should actually. Let me just test it again. Uh, so, what is your email? It takes a while. Um, okay, at least it's giving us another um, result now. As an AI, AI language model, I do not have an email address. However, okay, this is, let me see. Why is this happening right now? Mm. Why is this happening? We are providing the body messages, are we? Yes. So this is actually what we're sending. And let's see. Let's just try to debug this. One plus one. OK, now the sum is two. So actually, it's not doing what would, what I would expect. Uh, let me see. Mm, perhaps it's because we here have a, a role of the user. We did not put any assistant uh, role after it. 
So let's try it out and say assistant and the content. So the content of the assistant should be something like uh, I've it prepared over here. We just copy paste because it's a long text and I don't want to do any typos. It, it says just, uh, okay. So uh, I will only answer questions and requests related to the social media post generator application. I will uh, politely decline to answer all others. Okay, let's test it again now. Let's refresh and let's say one plus one. Uh, okay. You see that now it's answering um, with a two. So it's actually uh, responding our question, one plus one. Plus it says, however, please note that my scope of knowledge is related to the social media post generator application. And I'm here to assist you with any issues or queries you might have related to it. So that means that actually um, now it's correctly answering what we wanted. But it's not behaving as we expected because he should never answer nothing that uh, or anything that it's not related to our application. Let's try it with the email again. So, what is your email? Okay, uh, as an I language model, I don't have an email address of my own. However, the customer support team of the social media post generator application can be reached at support uh, at test.com. So it means that it's already taking uh, what we are trying to train. Okay, let's go for the next. Let's say, for example, the user would, uh, let me just comment this out. So uh, this is actually uh, train data. Hey. Train data. And let me just underneath put here um, so the user might ask something like, <clears throat> um, so which tag it, it's used, for example. So let's say, how is um, social media post generator built? Right. Oh, yeah. I think this happens to all of us, right? <laughs> um, built. Uh, sorry. Okay. And what we want uh, our uh, assistant to answer, let us. Uh, it's just content. Hey. Okay, what we want him to answer is okay, that's why it was not auto completing it correctly. Um, let's say with uh, GPT 3, GPT 3, and Vue.js, or let's say. GPT-3, Vue.js, a lot, and a lot of love, right? That's that's part of our work. <laughs> if you don't love what you do, so okay, let's just ask for it. Um, let's say, how is social? I, I'm gonna just stick with the exact same uh, sentence. Right, let me just copy paste it in order to don't do any uh, mistakes. And okay, the social media post generator application is built using GPT-3 natural language processing technology and Vue.js front end web framework. The application uses GPT-3's language generation capabilities to generate and suitable and relevant social media posts based on the article URL provided. The Vue.js framework then handles the, the display and rendering of the generated post on the user interface. So what happened right now? You can see that 
basically, based on this question, what we trained the bot is to just answer with GPT-3, Vue.js, and a lot of love. Let's say love like this so that he are, uh, understands it. I'm not sure if he can understand actually the the, the emojis, the, the emoticons, but um, just in case. But you see that the answer is not exactly the same. So what happened? Um, basically, what we are doing is just we are providing um, the answer that we want to do. But because it's a, a language model, what it's doing is just um, trying to give um, an answer based on what we trained it, but not exactly the same. So this is not a bot wh where we would just say, okay, if the user asks this, answer with this. No, we are just giving him some context and he will provide um, yeah, a textual or, 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 or a language um, explanation of it. So if I ask it again, let me just ask it again. It should ask. It should answer with something different, probably. It takes a while. I think my internet connection is um, slow. So um, he just said, "Okay, I apologize if my previous uh, previous response was not clear." So let me see. The social uh, media post generator application is built using GPT-3 language processing technology and Vue.js front-end framework. The back-end of the application is primarily responsible for handling the user input of an article URL, and so on and so forth. So you see that it changes the answer. So for it, uh, the answer might be different every time I uh, um, I ask the same question, and it will it might be also very different from one user to another. Um, and that, that is awesome. So basically, we are not just building a, um, an if-else bot that will just exactly respond respond uh, what uh, we, tr uh, we said he needs to respond. He will actually um, um, generate different responses and learn or based on what he has learned over the years and with the whole uh, language model that is behind, what is awesome. So let's let's just continue, okay? Let's just create uh, another one, and let's say, okay, uh, the role again, user, and what might he ask? Let's say that, um, for example, uh, this, uh, asking about the support. Is support available? Available uh, 24/7, and our answer, of what we might him want to answer is assistant. Assistant, sorry, the content. Oh man, there's no pressure, no pressure at all. I'm not nervous. <laughs> Um, okay, let's say no, but email us at supportest.com and we will respond within one business day, within one Business day. Business day. Okay, I don't know if perhaps I should just do this a little bit bigger and this a little bit smaller so we can see it better. Um, I don't know if that's okay. <clears throat> okay, now let's just ask it if support is available. I'm just gonna co I'm gonna copy paste it. And you say, no, the customer support team for the social media post generator application is not available 24 seven, but you can email us at support at test and we will respond within one business day. That is, that is exactly what we wanted him to respond, right? So I want just to test something that's live. That, 
Let me just remove the email from here. Okay, so let's just say that we trained the bot to say no, but email us and we will respond within one business day. Okay, let's see. Um, is there support 24-7? And this is awesome. Look at this. No, there's no 24 seven support for the social media post generator application. However, you can email us at support at test.com and we will respond within one business day without giving him exactly the information. We just said, okay, but email us. So you can see here, no, but email us. He already uh, get the information from one of the previous trained um, chunks, so this part here, and he provides that email in that response. So how awesome is that? Isn't that, oh no, I, I shouldn't say that word, but you all know what I mean, right? It's, it's, it's really awesome. <coughs> okay, let's go ahead. Let's, uh, and let's say, um, what do we want now? We let's say that we want to okay. Can I import posts from a URL? And for the assistant role assistant. And the answer should be something like, yes, click the import from URL button at the top of the article page. Okay. Let, so this is just, um, we need to test it that we are, I, I just hard refresh the page because I had to clean it up, but uh, we need to test that what we are actually training about is always uh, doing what we expect, right? Okay, let's see. Uh, yes, you can import posts from uh, a URL by clicking the import uh, from URL button on the top of the article page. Once you click the button, simply paste the URL and the article you want to import and click import. The software will automatically generate the post based on the content of the article. Great, perfect. So, is that not awesome? I mean, that, that, this is really awesome. But um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one more example. It, it, it will blow your mind. I hope it will blow your mind. It, it did when I figured that out. So um, it's 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 amazing. I mean, <laughs> I I have no words really. I have no words to to say how much I really enjoy working with uh, AI and all the ideas that come up once you start um, working with it. It's awesome. So let's let's ask our bot. Can you create a tweet for this article? And I'm just going to Ask it directly. Let me just hard refresh so that we have a, a, a clean uh, chat again. Let's see what it, it, it might answer right now. It say, sure, I would be happy to help you with that. However, I will need to know the article URL to, the, to generate the tweet. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let me see. Let me see where I need to make this a little bit bigger and uh i don't know help me out where can i get a blog post uh that don't don't compromise myself um jen i don't have any anyone prepared what do you need a blog post yeah just a blog post or whatever um uh, i don't know can i just, might i just pick this one up what do you think 
That works. That works. I was going to say, uh, yeah, you've got them. View School has like many of them. So good call. Okay. Great. So let's just, I, I'm going to just try to paste it in and let's see what that happens. Okay. And this is what the bot is just giving us, right? So great. Here is a tweet you can use for your article. So basically it's giving me a tweet. I could just copy paste this, copy paste this, right? Because uh, be aware that this is just uh, his answer and this is just a note that he's giving you to be ahead. So uh, I could just go to Twitter and paste this in. Awesome. Okay, let's go a step further. And this is gonna blow your mind. So let's say that um, we want the user to provide an URL. So let's say, and this is just a placeholder. Um, you can you can fill up a placeholder uh, in the way you want. That's that's awesome. I mean, um, AI or language models, um, they are so easy because you just provide the data that you want and how you feel comfortable. So if you know how to talk or how to um, speak any language, you can do whatever you want, right? So this is a placeholder. I could just have passed it uh, instead of this, something like this, for example, or, or whatever, okay? Let's stick to this because this is uh, something that I, I like more. So, and now let's... Do it again. Let me just copy that uh, link again and say, can you create a tweet for this article? And you see, I even did a typo in there and he understood exactly what I meant. This is, this is so awesome. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, exactly the same output. Awesome, great. But now, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, okay, for the role of an assistant, what we want you to answer is, I'm, I'm just gonna copy paste this so that you can see it. And I'm gonna just make the screen bigger so that you see it properly. The comma is missing there. So basically, we have another um, placeholder here. It says, insert post text here. And then what we are giving him is just a markdown uh, way of uh, giving us a response. So uh, this should not be in here. This is just from copy paste. So this is a markdown link, basically, uh, that says share on Twitter. It gives you the Twitter URL with a text that the um, um, that the bot that the bot actually generates for us. Okay, so this should be like this. I'm sorry, I just removed it because of that tool. Okay, and let me just grab this again and reload and try it again. Can you create? tweet uh, for this article and I'm just I just saw that I have a, an error there okay let's try it let's see if it's as expected it takes a while I will also explain why it takes so much Look at this. <laughs> it gives you the tweet so that you could just copy paste it. Here's a sample tweet, but you can copy paste this tweet or share it on your Twitter account. This is a link. If I click it, it just sends me to Twitter with that text that he generated. I just need to tweet it. Login, tweeted. I have not uh, my Twitter account logged in here, but you can see this is mind blowing, totally mind blowing. Uh, I just went back. Um, 
for me, this is awesome. But I'm going to show you one more thing. And this is just that you are aware of the capabilities that such a language model has. We have now a customer support chart. Um, I'm just going to ask him again, one plus one. Let's see what it answers. The answer is two. However, this question is not related to social media post generated application. OK, we already know that this is something that happens because of the road system has not um, the it's not heavy enough to um, to take care of this. But this is something that in future models probably it will it, it will be solved. OK, let's say hello. My name is uh, Baudi. Uh, yes. Can you generate a tweet for me? For this article, for example? Yes. This is great, but in this case, he did not answer like we uh, ex or like we trained him, probably because of uh, my way of asking him. Let me just ask him again. Can you create a tweet for this article? Oh, what is happening? Why is it not doing it yet? Feel free to customize or let me know. Um, okay, this is... Now I'm surprised. It should just actually give it to me, but I don't know. This is what happens sometimes, right? This is coding. This is not a, a specific science. <laughs> Sometimes it just goes wrong. Okay, it's not giving it to me right now. I don't know why it should. Mm, this is strange. I did not change anything. Uh, okay, let me just... Okay, I am, it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, we, we already saw that it's working. What I want you to show is... Okay, let me... Just ask the bot. Okay. Can you give it uh, in Spanish? I don't know how many of you can um, know Spanish, know how to talk Spanish. I'm I'm Spanish person. So and I can tell you that what he just did is awesome. He translated it perfectly. That's something. Uh, so imagine a customer support chat that it doesn't matter where your customer comes from. It will just translate it automatically. You could even, um, based on the on the IP or or the, the current language of the browser, you could detect it and, and even only uh, answer in, in the correct language. So this is awesome. This is really awesome. Um, there, there's one thing that I need to uh, tell you. This way of training that we are using right now, so basically what we are doing is on each um, message, let me just reload this. So we have a clean chat now. If I just say hello, on each message, we are sending all our, um, or, or the whole array of messages to ChatGPT. And this is costful. It means that probably we are consuming around I don't know, right now, um, 500 tokens, 400 tokens, just for that hello, right? Only for uh, sending it, plus the response. Um, this is not the most, or, or, or this is not the best way to train a bot, but this is the simplest one and the most effective one. Uh, there are other ways to train um, uh, a language model or an AI, uh, you could have a look at the uh, fine tunings and embeddings. If you are curious about this, uh, those are the correct ways to do it. But if you want to go fast and uh, you don't care really about um, 
the tokens because it's just a chatbot and you probably will not spend, I mean, you will not spend more than a cent for a, a complete chat of one customer. So I wouldn't care about it. This is the best and the simplest way to train it, but it's not the most efficient way to do it. Okay. And this is just for chat GPT 3.5 and 3.5 Turbo. Uh, I didn't test it with GPT 4 yet, um, but you can see that it's already awesome what we can accomplish with, with, with this technology. So um, I think I'm ready. I'm not sure. Jen, uh, you are on mute. I was just talking, seeing if you would be able to translate off of mute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was splendid. That was splendid. Thank you so much. I I love that you also showed the translation and oh my gosh, so much goodness there. I, I don't know where to start with the questions. Uh, at the beginning would be great. Or at the end, maybe I'll throw you for oh, a surprise. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, assistant statement should always be next to the user statement. Should they be uh, next, uh, next to each other? Yeah, it should. It should always be a question and answer. I mean, um, you can give multiple users uh, inputs and then one assistant, but it's um, as far as I've tested, it's not as good as giving a question answer, question answer. Okay. And uh, do you have to send training instructions on each message to uh, request to open API? Yes. In this case, yes. So let's say um, I have, um, how, how could I explain it? Let's say I have a, an if statement here. If it's the first message, send it along. Uh, from the second on, don't send it. Uh, he will not be able to know this because each request is stateless at this point, how we are using it right now. There are other ways to do it, way more complex, but uh, with this way of doing, it's the only way to do it. Thank you. And um, this one makes me think of the translation you just did, and I'm, I'm curious how it translates. Can we train the chatbot to work with domain-specific jargon or techno technical terminology? Totally. You can train it on whatever you want. As said, this is not the most efficient way to do it because even, even if you would just have it in your database and load it in here, it, it works great. Problem is that um, it gets slow at some point. So when you have a lot of messages in, in, the, in the array, it, it gets slower. Each, each interaction is even slower. Um, but you can just train whatever you want. The, that's the awesome part. There are other ways to just provide... Um, whole PDFs or Word or even Notion uh, documents um, to train the bot and um, way more efficient because what you do basically is you, you, you create a, a language model database that you provide once. Um, it's way cheaper uh, from a tokens, per, uh, tokens perspective. So it, it just consumes half uh, half of it. And this is only one time. And then instead of saying, uh, my screen is not shared, right? Uh, no, no, it's it... not. Okay. No, so instead of saying the model GPT 3.5 Turbo, then you say, okay, take my own model that I already trained. That would be the way to do it. Interesting. Interesting. And that, that does lead a bit. And is it possible to train it just once uh, using a kind of session and not providing those training contexts in every request. And it sounds like you answered a bit of that. So. Exactly. I mean, at the end, it's exactly that. So you have a model that you have already trained. Uh, uh, OpenAI would just give you that model uh, Slack or I unique ID, and you just provide it. Um, so you don't need to send this along. Uh, this also is way cheaper because you don't send uh, or you cons don't consume that many tokens on each request. Perfect. And we do have some earlier questions. So if I start from the beginning instead, um, I like that you showed that uh, uh, it can translate uh, what 
was possible, but can you make it so that way someone can request a specific language in the chat bot or um, how to reply each time? Um, in this, I, yeah, I mean, you could, you could basically, would you, how I would do it, uh, if I know the language of the user already, let's say it's the, I have the user session and he has uh, a language in the database saved in his profile, or I grab it from the front end or whatever, I can just provide it up front. Here Very in the cool. messages, let's say uh, I, um, at the beginning, okay, this only in English, only in Spanish, and it, it should work like this. But the good thing about this is that you really don't need it. Because as soon as you, uh, as, as soon, let's say, with a chatbot, I have no interaction yet. I open the chat. I start talking to him in Spanish. He will answer in Spanish. So it's not only a translation. He will actually get all your content and answer in Spanish or whatever language it is. Of course, uh, if you provide that context in the specific language, it's less probable that he does mistakes. Because as I said, He's just not answering whatever you train him. He's uh, he's really actually uh, creating context out of it. He's arguing uh, based on what you provided to him. And this is the awesome part because it, it really, I mean, I've, I've uh, tested some uh, um, AI models and you can uh, actually put a verbose mode and he will actually say, okay, I don't understand this. I need to search it up. So he's really acting human-like and interesting. this is yeah yeah it's it's really really interesting that's cool uh and how do you uh how do we manage the chatbot state during a conversation uh there are multiple ways i mean uh, right now we are just saving it in the front end and in an array and sending it along to the back end we could just save it on the back end directly on the on the database just before sending it to openai and saving the response as well. Uh, based on the user ID or the session, you could just grab it back when the user is back. There are a lot of ways to do it. Um, in this case, it's just a customer support chat. If you just want to go easy, don't save it. If you really want to know what your user asked for, uh, you want big data, you want to analyze it later, save it on a database. I would go for a Mongo database or something like that way better than MySQL because at the end there's a lot of uh, back and forth. Um, that's how I would do it. Very cool. Thank you. And how do we limit the chatbot's responses to specific topics to ensure the responses are safe? Yeah, that's very difficult to answer. Um, I've been playing with this for days. And it seems it works great. It does not answer anything that I don't want. And suddenly it ju you just ask him two plus two and um, it gives you the, uh, the right answer instead of not answering it. For me, what I've tested so far, the, m the most important part is the first message. So once you get the first message in place, he will he, he most of the time he will never respond something that is not related to the topics if you specify that if you really told him don't respond anything that has nothing to do with this topic um therefore what i suggest and what i have done in my tests always is uh, what i do is i uh, when the user opens the chat what i do is uh, on the background just say hello so that the the, the open ai responds already and from that moment on, it doesn't matter what the user asks for. Uh, he, he should not avoid um, or he should not answer anything that's not related to the topic. But th this is something that I cannot ensure, right? So That makes sense. And I, for our last question of today, of how do we handle data privacy concerns while training the chatbot? That's up to you. Uh, I mean, this is... Um, at the end, if you go to OpenAI, they state that everything that you put in their system, um, it, you should have no data privacy concerns because they can make use of it. They can make money of it. Uh, so be careful with that. 
what is very, very important. Um, don't put any private data in it there because at some point they might sell this. Um, and this is not up to you because you are connected to an external API and um, in their um, in the privacy terms, they stated very, very clear. Yeah, so you can't do anything about that. Yeah, and that totally makes sense. And I, I appreciate that. That was our last question for you, Bowdy. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing what, what else you do with AI and with VSchool. Thank you very much, uh, Jen, for... Uh, for having me here or for inviting me and thank you all and I hope you enjoyed it.